Sir. Thank you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen of the House, today is July 26, 2017. It has been 56 days since Senate Bill 1, as amended, passed the legislature, both the House and the Senate. This legislation has been much heralded by Democrats throughout the state and also, in particular, Democrat members of the House and Senate. Here are some of the things that those members have said, and they're all good. Here's one. Students, parents, and teachers deserve nothing less than for their needs to be considered in the funding formula. This will help our students get the world-class education that they need to compete in a global economy. This will give our schools the tools they need to ensure all students in our community can receive a world-class education. And this legislation renews our shared commitment to our students, teachers, and principals by increasing our investment in education. So I ask why? I ask you why won't the Democrat leadership in Springfield send this revolutionary bill to the governor? What are you afraid of? Schools throughout Illinois either have or are preparing to open their doors to more than two million school children. Yet the governor does not even have the opportunity to take action on legislation that your side says will give students a world-class education and renews our shared commitment in our students. So why are we left without an education K-12 budget? Could it be that your budget, the 32% permanent income tax increase upon families and employers, included some specious language stating that funding for K-12 must be evidence-based? Well, if you look through that budget bill, SB6, there's no definition of what evidence-based means. It's odd. I don't know what it means. We can talk about what it could mean, but the fact is it's not in the statute. So your plan must have been conditioned upon the passage of Senate Bill 1. Maybe that's the case. But the question I have is why would someone insert language into the bill conditioning funding based on a future event? How does that provide certainty to schools knowing their school year is being held in advance by legislative sleight of hand placed in the budget by the drafters of that budget, which are the Democrats. Who's playing the games? Not this side of the aisle. Who's putting schools and students in the middle of this Springfield fight? It's not the House Republicans. We have made it clear that we will support an education reform bill that helps all schools fairly and equitably. Senate Bill 1 doesn't accomplish that, and you know it. It's real simple. Your party needs to send the bill to the governor. After all the bluster that I heard in May, I think you must implore upon your leadership, both in this chamber and the other chamber, to release the bill. I speak, speak collectively for this caucus when I say that schools must open on time and their funding must be improved and it must be more equitable. But we have very little time to do this, so stop the stalling. You may say, and I'm sure somebody may jump up and say, well, you know what, you, just gotta, you need to negotiate with uh, the leaders in both the House and the Senate. Well, we tried that last month, I did, and also the Senate Republican leader. It didn't work. The leaders, in typical fashion, what I've seen time and time again, year after year, end up negotiating between themselves and not with the Republican leadership. I'm not going to fall in that trap again. Send them the bill.